Welcome everybody to the Max McGann Full Pet Trials Tour. This is a field of Oakley that we're stood in. Um, it has been grown widely in the UK for a number of years. However, it does now have issues with rust susceptibility. It started off with a rating of about six and it's now plummeted to a two. However, if you can keep on top of your rust issues, then it's still a very good yielding variety, which is why it's still very popular with farmers. But I don't want to keep you in the rain too long, so let's make our way up to the trial and we'll start having a look at some of the treatments. Right, well now we're up in the plots, uh, just to tell you a little bit more about the, about the crop, about the trial design. Uh, it was drilled middle of September, which would be fairly typical for the UK. Um, we have a fully randomised and replicated trial here uh, with two replicates going up this tram line here. Um, the timings they were applied at T1, so grace stage 31, 32, which uh, this season was a very late season in the UK, so it was on the 22nd of May. The T2 timing applied at about growth stage 41 was on the 7th of June. So we're a few weeks behind what would be typical for UK agriculture, but everybody has been in that situation this season. The objectives of this trial, we were looking at applying Folpet in mixtures and in coforms earlier in the programme, so at the T1 timing, so looking at the benefit of having that multi-site activity in there, enhanced uh, triazole uptake, uptake as well at that early timing, and then repeating the same treatments again at the second timing. Um, the base programme to all of these, so the T1 treatments were the various mixtures, followed by a bixofen prothioconazole coform, or it was the bixofen prothioconazole coform followed by the Folpet mixtures. Now, I would like to take you up and show you the untreated to start with, which we've had a massive epidemic of yellow rust. So it's very interesting to see and a great starting point to see what the chemistry is adding. Right, so this is the untreated plot. I think you can very clearly see the amount of yellow rust we have here. Uh, I said that Oakley was very susceptible and left uncontrolled, this is exactly the situation you see. Even when you come and look into the crop as well, basically the bottom of the canopy is completely dead. You can see active sporulating yellow rust moving its way up through the canopy, but all the way through as well. And even in these very bad spots, there's virtually no green leaf left at all in that crop, clearly impacting yield and not the situation that we want to see. Right, so this is the first treatment we're going to look at. Um, it's had two applications. The first application was half a litre of epoxyconazole, which was delivering 62 and a half grams of epoxy there. Uh, the T2 treatment has then been the uh, prothioconazole bixofen coform. As you can see, the first thing of note is that it's obviously a lot cleaner than the untreated we were just looking at. However, these days, half a litre of epoxyconazole on its own really isn't strong enough in a rust situation. If you open up the canopy, again, I mean a great improvement over the untreated, but it's very easy to start finding the yellow rust moving up the canopy. Um, it is a lot cleaner yellow rust rise at the bottom of the canopy. And in fact, you can see more septoria there as a result because the leaf hasn't been killed by the yellow rust. However, like I say, great improvement on the untreated, but we can definitely do better. Right, so now we've seen what straight epoxyconazole does at T1. Let's go and have a look at the next plot down and we'll see the benefit of adding Folpet. Well, the first thing to notice about this plot is immediately you can see that there is a lot less yellow rust in here. You can still just pick up the odd little bit on the flag leaf, although as much as anything that will be to do with the T2 treatment and it's not the strongest product for yellow rust because when you open up the canopy, it is plain to see here. The previous plot we looked at, you could find yellow rust all the way up through the canopy. Here, we virtually have four clean leaves coming up through the canopy. There is still that bit of septoria just bubbling around in the bottom of the canopy as there had been in the other plots. However, what we don't have is this active yellow rust coming all the way up through the canopy. So, 
what we're saying here is the benefit of adding just 500 grams of fold pet at that T1 timing, the enhanced uptake of the triazole as a result of adding the fold pet and getting on top of rust early when we move on to some of the later treatments where they've only been applied at T2, you will quickly see the benefit of getting on top of your disease program early, keeping disease out of the canopy. So in this plot, we're starting to build up on the program a bit more. Uh, this particular plot has had a treatment with, again, half a litre of epoxyconazole, 62 and a half grams. We've then added in one of the new SDHIs, Pentheopyrad. And in addition to that, added one of the other multi-site protectant uh, chemicals, uh, chlorthalonil, and there's 500 grams of that in there. I think one of the first things you can see just looking across is that there is a little bit of yellow rust on the flag leaf here. Um, again, possible uh, to do with the weakness of the T2 treatment. So opening out the canopy, again, you can still see there's septoria in the bottom of the canopy, similar levels to before really. Um, but what you can start seeing here is a bit of yellow rust just working its way up through the canopy. Not seriously high levels, but noticeable. Um, that would be one of the slight issues with chlorthalonil. Um, is it is a good protectant, but it only really has septoria activity, um, no rust activity. So that's probably the weakness we're seeing here. So what will be interesting is to move down to the next plot where we'll switch the chlorthalonil to a fold pet and see what that's delivering for us. So this plot here, we have a T1 treatment of half a litre of epoxyconazole, so 62 and a half grams again. We've got the addition of pentheopyrad, the new SDHI chemistry, and the difference in this plot compared with the last one that we were just looking at is that we've switched 500 grams of chlorthalonil to 500 grams of folpet. Now, one of the first things that I can see here is that even with that slightly weaker T2 treatment, there is definitely ye less yellow rust on the flag leaves. When we open the canopy out, it is immediately apparent. You've got slightly better septoria control, um, but what you're not seeing here is any of the yellow rust working its way up through the canopy. That is in part because of the enhanced triazole uptake delivered by Folpet, the inherent disease activity of Folpet over chlorthalonil, adding more to your disease control program, and in my mind, this is one of the standout treatments in the trial. Thus far in this trial, we've looked at tank mixing various products together. We've looked at starting with an epoxyconazole, the addition of Folpet, and the addition of an SDHI. What we actually have here in this plot is some co-formulated products. We've started with a Maxim again co-formulated epoxyconazole in mix with Folpet. And in the addition to that, we've added the SDHI Pentheopyrad. One of the first things I notice here is that it's a very green, very clean looking plot. When you open the canopy out, you can see exactly why. There is very little septoria in the bottom of the canopy. There isn't any yellow rust moving up through the canopy and you have these beautifully clean green leaves all helping to build yield and in my mind this is the standout treatment in the trial. Okay so now we've moved on to some of the T2 timings so applied at growth stage 41. Prior to this we'd been looking at the benefit of getting on top of your disease program early um, front end loading and the benefit of the enhanced triazole uptake. So we've repeated the same treatments again but applied at the later timing having had the base treatment of prothioconazole and bixofen. And one of the first things I see here is you can see there is yellow rust on the flag leaves here and opening out the crop as well you can see there's yellow rust, there's septoria in there and to me, really, this is illustrating the fact that by not getting on top of your disease early in the programme with the best products, getting as much chemistry as you can into the plant, 
you're basically fighting a losing battle for the rest of the season. Um, with the best will in the world, with the strongest chemistry, I still don't think you'd be able to get on top of this rust. What this plot has actually had applied at T2 was one of the best treatments from the T1 timing. This plot here has had the SDHI, it's had half a litre of epoxyconazole, so 62 and a half grams of epoxy, and 500 grams of Folpet. But like I say, you're struggling with the disease by leaving your disease control too late in the programme. This plot here has had a T1 treatment of a mixture of Bixofen and Prothioconazole. We did comment on its slight weakness to rust earlier, and that is basically what is coming out in here now. When you open the canopy out, you can see reasonable disease control in terms of septoria at the bottom of the canopy, but clearly see yellow rust moving its way up through the canopy. And even with the best chemistry in the world, once you've allowed disease to get into your crop, it is very hard to control and especially rust. Now, this particular plot then has a double weakness because the T2 treatment here has been a tank mix. We've still had our base of 62 and a half grams of epoxyconazole. But in addition to that, we've added the SDHI Penthia Pyrad. But then the third component is chlorthalonil. Again, not a strong rust product. So it wouldn't be your product of choice either in this situation. So that is why you can clearly see the yellow rust on the flag leaves and fighting an uphill battle to try and get control of the disease. So in this plot here, I was discussing before about the challenges of leaving your disease control to later in the programme not getting that front end loading, not getting the benefit of the enhanced triazole uptake to try and get on top of your disease program early. So what we have here, relative to the previous plot we were looking at, which was the SDHI epoxyconazole chlorthalonil, here we have switched the chlorthalonil to Folpet. And I said before, it's a challenging situation to try and get on top of yellow rust once it is in the crop. But just looking across, particularly on the flag leaves here, you can still see the rust in the crop, but it is delivering slightly better control over the chlorthalonil. So even in that tricky situation, we're still just adding a little bit more to the disease control, getting more of the triazole, the curative triazole partner into the plant. When you open the canopy out, yeah, you still see that bit of septoria at the bottom there is a little bit of yellow rust coming up in the canopy but actually relative to the last plot we are definitely getting better disease control using Folpet over chlorthalonil however the best way of doing it is still by getting the right chemistry on early in the program so the last plot i'd like to show you today is looking at the final treatment the second timing and the previous plot we looked at was the tank mix of epoxyconazole, Folpet and the SDHI. However, what we have here is the Mactosham again co-formulated epoxyconazole and Folpet mixture and then the addition of the SDHI pentheopyrad in the tank mix. Compared to the last plot, and I've already been discussing the challenges of trying to get on top of yellow rust once it's in your canopy um, in the previous plots but one of the first things you can notice here yes you can still find bits of yellow rust in here but at lower levels than the, co uh, than the tank mixed products. When you open out the canopy similar story really still a bit of septoria at the bottom of the canopy but keeping the yellow rust out and Yes, a little bit of yellow rust on the flag leaves, but the co-formulated product delivering slightly better disease control over the tank mix. I hope you've enjoyed our tour of the plots today. Uh, we've covered a lot of key messages. The importance of front end loading, getting on top of disease control early, 
the importance of uh, enhanced uptake of the chemistry which you're applying to your crop as well. And looking to the future, disease control is beginning to become more difficult as fewer molecules come to market, the chemistry that is currently available is suffering from resistance shifts, and that is why Folpet is the future to serial disease control. <laughs>